Well folks, welcome back to another video. I was doing a little cleaning around the shop and found the thread dial that I'd taken off my Hindi gearhead lathe when I was uh, working on the apron. And since I've never used the thread dial, I didn't notice I hadn't put it back on. And then I remember the reason I hadn't put it back on was at some point in its life, um, this has been broken and then looks like it's welded with a nickel stick rod and then at some other point in its life it broke right below the right below the um, repair and if I can get this if I can hold this right as I turn the thread dial you'll notice the crack opens and closes as it turns so let's take it apart and see what's wrong with it. So I've taken it apart. Uh, I kind of had a suspicion that the damage that had broke that had also uh, bent the shaft. There's a the little gear that runs in the lead screw and then the shaft with the dial on the end. Uh, I got the V-blocks out because I already had a suspicion that there was something wrong there. As you can see the the shaft has been bent pretty serious. So I thought about trying to straighten the shaft, but given how small it was and uh, it's just a pretty simple part, I thought it'd be easier to make a new shaft and quicker. The only problem was getting it apart. There was a screw that went through the face of the dial and kind of locked it into the shaft. And it had been there since the 1940s and didn't want to come out. So had to uh, resort to drilling out the screw and uh, and then pulling that top piece off the, the old shaft. Even with the uh, screw drilled out, it didn't want to come out without a little help. In order to increase the odds of the brazed repel on the repair on the cast iron working, I grooved out the edges of the broken bit, kind of create a little V-groove. Give some room for the braze to sit down in there. The next tricky part was trying to figure out how to clamp the parts together. I tried using clamps, but there was no good way to do it. So a little bit of uh, stainless steel tie wire and uh, had a piece of shafting that was just the right uh, diameter to fit nicely in the, uh, the bore there to hold it together while I worked on the brazing. With the parts held together, I Put a preheat on uh, just to get a nice even heat on the parts. I, I believe that temple stick there is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then just uh, using the same silicon bronze that I used, the rod that I used in the gear repair a couple of videos back, I went ahead and brazed the part back together. This is only my second brazing job after that uh, the gear repair, but Having watched Keith Fenner and Keith Rucker and a lot of the other YouTube creators repair cast iron this way, I, um, it seems to work well and it's a, a pretty easy process. I've enjoyed learning how to do the brazing. And hopefully it won't uh, create a weak spot like the uh, nickel repair did, although I suspect this lathe that lived its life before I got it in the front of it fellow's garage for years. I think it got bumped by cars because most of the handles and dials on the apron were bent when I got it. And then this thread dial was cracked. So after getting it, things brazed up, I went ahead and covered it up with a fiberglass blanket to let it cold, cool down nice and slowly. And uh, with it all together, it looks like the, the bore appears to be fairly true and looks like we got enough braze on there that hopefully it will hold up. I tried using that uh, piece of shafting, but it, it, it had been hardened on the outer side and was, really didn't want to turn nicely. So I grabbed a piece of something else and went ahead and started making that shaft, turning down a, a uh, shoulder for the dial face itself to sit on. Then with the, that on, I was ready to measure the length of the original shaft and the replacement and see if I could face it down to about the right diameter. Then that shoulder was turned down to fit the gear that runs along the lead screw with a little bit of extra for the nut that 
threads on to hold it. Just using the front of the tailstock to push against the die as I cut that thread on. It was a little bit tough to thread as it was a was a tool steel. So after testing up the gear that runs on the lead screw and the nut, I was ready to start putting things together. The lead the gears held on was held on by a little uh, key and I didn't have a key cut or anything that size so I used a, a roll pin and uh, drilled the shaft f for the roll pin which uh, turned out to be a mistake as we'll see I had to just cut that shoulder down a little bit to make sure the gear and the face were sh the right distance apart and then I used the um, quill on the mill to make sure I was holding the shaft vertically with a little V block to lock it in place, I just held it loosely in a uh, in a collet in the quill on the mill, and then was able to uh, get it tight up against the fixed jaw, tighten it down, and then just slide it up out of the collet since I just had it on there loosely, and that assured a, make the shaft was vertical in the vise. And here I made the mistake of trying to drill the shaft and the and the dial together um, without loctiting. I'm just using the drill bit. I've got the dial slid a little bit up, a little bit high on the shaft, so I could line everything up. Um, but it turned out that was a mistake. As uh, it drilled okay, I used an end mill so I could cut a nice square bottomed hole. To cut the hole, but then when I um, tried to tap the the two parts together, that's where I really ran into some problems, as you'll see here in a moment. With the dial face on the shaft and the the hole kind of splitting the seam between them, I tried to run a tap down through but the dial would rotate a little bit on the shaft and bind up the tap and just couldn't quite get it to work down what I so I ended up doing what I should have done in the first place and that was uh, grabbing a little bit of my Loctite 262 and Loctiting the dial face onto the shaft first uh, before trying to go ahead and tap it. Nice, the drill bit was just uh, slid in the hole there to keep things aligned while the Loctite set. Once the Loctite set up, tapping the uh, hole for the set screw was no problem. A lot of the, well, a fair number of the dials and flanges and gears and and whatnot on this lay they're locked in place with a, a set screw run right down the seam between the two parts I guess it keeps them from pulling apart from each other and also keeps them from rotating keeps them locked together so they don't rotate against each other the hole did get a little chowdered up with all my efforts so I have to clean that up a little bit I thought I'd use a little body filler to make it look nice on the, the the old nickel repair as well as my uh, brazed repair and found that the three jaw vise made a really nice uh, clamp to hold the to hold the part while I worked it over with the file and some and then uh, sanded it all smooth to kind of blend it and I guess disguise the repair a bit There's the blended part with the repairs covered up and blended in. Give the whole thing a bit of a wipe down with some acetone and then for paint I couldn't find my paint stirrer so I thought a bent piece of TIG rod would work well and it doesn't work that well. I should have kept looking for my real mixer. Then just a coat of the industrial gray paint that I put on the apron and tailstock of the lathe. I just stuck the old shaft into the part and the little bend in it kind of locked it before it so it made a nice handle to hold it while painting. 
I use a razor to clean up the machine surface around the, the face of the dial. And then to hold the gear in place while I tighten the nut down, I just used a little wedge of uh, aluminum to kind of lock it in place. With a little cleanup, the thread dial was ready to go back on. There was a pin that engages it to the edge of the carriage, and the hole for the bolt is a little bit oversized so that it can be swung in to engage the lead screw or swung back out if it's not being used. Gave it a little oil and ready to test it out. Now when I started testing is when I realized the uh, mistake I'd made. On the original part, the dial face and the gear were indexed such that the marks on the dial engaged the mark in the thread dial housing when the half nuts uh, needed to be engaged and disengaged. And I didn't take that into account when I pinned the gear to the shaft. And so as you can see, the marks don't quite line up. It's close, but at some point I'll probably have to go ahead and take the gear off. And it's just got one eighth inch hole with a one inch uh, roll pin in it. And I'll uh, repin it so it's lined up instead of off a little bit. Although, um, since I don't use the thread dial very much, I may not get around to it. I should do it though, so in case somebody does want to use it at some point. And so here I'm just showing with uh, the reversing lead screw, there's a lever on the apron that you can engage in forward or reverse, and it will reverse the lead screw. As you can see uh, here, the thread dial will start turning backwards uh, when the lead screw is uh, reversed. Now it's turning in reverse, which is the normal way I thread with it. Um, however, I have done some longer threads where it would be nice to be able to disengage the half nuts and bring the carriage back quickly instead of waiting for it to reverse back. So that's the lead screw in the forward position and then up into neutral and then reverse. Now the lead screw turns in the opposite direction. And there's a uh, single tooth dog clutch in the headstock that is keyed so that the lead screw is always engaged in the proper position. And that's uh, the lever there in the middle of the apron is the clutch to engage and disengage the spindle. There's another one over in the by the headstock, but there's also one on the apron if you're working down at the other end. So now I just uh, backed the thread dial off so it's not engaged in the lead screw and locked it down and got it all done. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next video.